I'd be willing to bet that there's some people watching this who uh, think that there's nothing I know about the break that they don't already know. And uh, I'll bet. <laughs> Uh, this here particular video that you're watching is just an intro nothing more than an intro to so far it's a 10 part series um, it might be one or two videos less or one or two more uh, so it's going to be long and the whole series is going to take a long time to produce and I'm not going to work on it every day so you'll just have to be patient and I have gotten to work on it it's just an awful lot of work. There's a lot to this. And people don't realize how much there is to just this one shot in the pool, you know? And the most important shot of all. Once you start getting, like, really down and dirty into what's really happening in the break and what's happening with all nine balls, uh, you begin to realize how much control over the game that you do have. You know, it's never 100%, but the better you get at the break, the more control you have over it. And you start seeing the whole game a little, actually a lot different. When they see you break, they're thinking one of two things. They're thinking, well, this is going to be easy. Or they're thinking, well, I've got my work cut out for me. That's it. There's no in-between there. So, what does that guy know that you don't? Um, that a lot. There's an awful lot to it, and you'll, you'll determine that for yourself by the time this series ends. Uh, there is a lot to it. Um, and there should be, you know. It should not be, you know, cut and dry, A to Z. This is what you have to do. You'll see what I mean. Most players, and I'm, I'm referring to real legitimate pool players here, don't spend nearly enough time on this issue. And I'll, I'll keep stressing it, it's the most important shot in pool. So, whatever it takes you need to get off that, uh, whatever's blocking you from practicing this, and get on to there's nothing more important to this if you want to take your game up as far as you can take it. This subject gets complicated because the rules of the game keep changing and that's to keep anyone from outsmarting the game itself and getting things down to a science like Corey Dole came close to doing, Shane Van Boning came close to doing. And they want to give people a fair chance and, you know, and create a little more excitement to the game. Where a lot of tournaments are still winter breaks, and, you know, there's guys that can and do run 9 and out or 11 and out. So, while that might be exciting to a pool player, it's not real exciting to the average fan who's just like sitting there going, this is boring. So it's probably time to put your ego aside and understand that jumping the cue ball up 10 feet off the table is, you know, it might look cool, but it's not what it's about. <laughs> and it's, it's, all, what it, it's, it's all about control um, and, and understanding things that you, you didn't even think about before. You start seeing the game different and you start enjoying it more because now you understand 
what's going on here. You, you, can, you can't control what you don't understand. And so once you start understanding what all nine balls are done, plus the cue ball ten balls are done, um, you start also realizing how much control you have. And that's what it pulls all about. It's about controlling the game. A typical example is someone who can take nine balls and throw them out on the table and run them out most of the time. And if they get ball in hand on the one ball. And so the player understands English, understands the line, can play the game, can play, you know, can make balls, can get position, all of that. Um, but their break is weak. So the local shortstops are running all over them because they can't control the game. And even some of the local bangers are, are beating them just, you know, by getting a little bit lucky and when they miss, they hide a little. So basically, what the guy who's a good player but can't break is, is doing is saying, here, here's control of the table. And if you don't run out, I'm going to. Um, so you're giving your opponent this incredible luxury of just having control of the table. You're losing control of the table. Um, and, of course, the good players are going to run all over you. And even the bad players are, like, when they miss, you know, they'll, they'll hide your object ball or, or they'll play a safety, or, you know. I mean, you can't, you can't really beat anyone until you have a good break. Before even determining how to break the balls, you have to determine the size and the speed of the table you're playing on, the air conditioner in the room or the heater in the room, uh, the human flaw factor, of, you know, how straight is the rack, how tight is the rack, and then about a hundred other things that you have to figure out before you even figure out how to break these balls. And then you got the most important factor of all, and that's the rules that you're playing by. And, and every tournament you go to, and every person you match up with is going by different rules. It's like, what the... Is the one ball being racked on the spot, or the nine ball? The three balls have to go over the head string. Is the two ball being placed in the back of the rack or anywhere you want? Is there another ball that has to be placed in the back of the rack? Um, and it goes on and on and on. It's like, Jesus, bro. I mean, imagine if there's every football game that you turn on your TV and some guys want to play football with a 50 yard field and some guys want to play with a 200 yard field and they're just sitting around bickering about the rules. Man, come on, Paul. Get your shit together, man. So, yeah, it all factors. And especially that three balls over the head string factor because it eliminates the self break. Um, and another big one is where how the balls are being wrecked. Is, is the one ball in the spot? So a lot of tournaments are now changing that it's the nine ball on the spot, which makes it difficult to make that wing ball and keep in control of the table. So, <laughs> I mean, you, you got to figure all this out before you determine what you want to do with the break. So let's just say, for the sake of an argument, that there's ten main ways to break the balls. Depending on, you know, the speed of the table, the rules that you're playing by, everything else. Um, but you're, you know, two or three local tournaments, they do it by these rules here. So that's what the player practices, those rules right there. And gets the break down to being competent. And he starts winning all these tournaments. And then he goes to Minnesota and they don't allow those rules. Um, you gotta play by these rules and all of a sudden it's like, uh-oh. Yeah, and he just lost control.
complete control of this table because this brake sucks when he tries to do it by their words. And you see why you should have been practicing this all along for years and years and years? Because now you can't just practice one way to brake, you have to practice all ten ways to brake. Did you get there yet? Can you beat the ghost? Skeet, skeet, skeet. 